Uh, okay, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Palestine Center. Uh, and please turn off your uh, cell phone. Um, it is a pleasure to have you all here today. And especially, it's a special delight for me uh, to have uh, uh, the opportunity to present to you or to produce to you these two uh, highly skilled, highly professional uh, journalists uh, who have covered a very complex, very difficult uh, conflict uh, with uh, a great deal of balance uh, and, uh, uh, I would say, uh, objectivity uh, under very, very difficult uh, circumstances. Uh, I've known uh, Tagrid actually for, uh, from the time she was in, in Washington before she went back to cover uh, Gaza and it's been also a pleasure to, while I don't know uh, Shireen personally, uh, before today I've never met her, uh, I followed her uh, coverage on Al Jazeera and uh, I've been very impressed uh, also with, uh, with the coverage uh, that she has offered to the public and the Arab world and beyond. Uh, the, uh, as you, we all know, and the, the, the Arab-Israeli conflict and the Palestinian conflict is a very complex, very controversial, and highly uh, emotional uh, topic. And this has been reflected in the coverage in the region and in the United States. Uh, and that's why it's important to hear from these two uh, uh, ladies who have done, as I said, an excellent job uh, in covering this, uh, this conflict. Um, and uh, we've uh, asked them uh, to talk about uh, their perspective uh, and their experiences uh, uh, about uh, uh, the coverage and where the, what recommendations they may have uh, later on. Of course, we'll open it later to your uh, questions and answers. But let me say just a couple of words about each one of them. Uh, uh, Tagrib is today a visiting scholar uh, and the Middle East program at the Carnegie Endowment uh, where her research is focusing on Gaza uh, and she is uh, the Heinrich Bohl Fellow. Uh, since 2001, uh, she has been based in the Gaza Strip reporting on political developments for the New York Times uh, and serving as a senior analyst for the International Crisis Group. Uh, throughout her career as a journalist, uh, Tagrid has worked as a correspondent for Al Hayat LBC uh, TV and as a producer for Agence France Press, uh, as well as uh, for Al Jazeera and Middle East Broadcasting and NBC. Uh, she has also worked as an assistant producer on documentaries by National Geographic, PBS, uh, CBS, uh, and ITV. Uh, she, uh, she also, uh, in the year 2010, led a three year uh, mentorship program on election coverage for journalists in, uh, in northern Sudan. Uh, under the auspices of the United uh, UNDP and uh, Linnaeus University's Fojo Media uh, Institute. Uh, Tabrid has been uh, one of the few uh, journalists uh, who have covered uh, Gaza and the Gaza conflict uh, uh, from uh, 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 foreign American uh, media uh, outlet, and that gives her uh, a unique perspective. Shireen is also, of course, uh, most people know her uh, from her work on uh, Al Jazeera satellite channel. She has also been in a unique position. She's covered Israel as well as the West Bank uh, for, uh, for the channel. Uh, and she's had a 10-year uh, experience of reporting on the ongoing conflict. Uh, with especially, she's done a lot of work not only on the uh, conflict with, uh, itself and on the cycle of violence, uh, but she's covered political, social, uh, and economic issues in, uh, in the West Bank. And uh, she has uh, also made features as well as interviewed uh, newsmakers. She has been also the, uh, one of the founders of the Voice of Palestine as a radio correspondent and as a pre presenter. She has also, before that, I believe, worked for uh, Radio Monte Carlo. Yeah, 2000. Was it at the same time? It was 2000 till, till 2003. Yeah. And she has been uh, awarded a number of uh, international uh, prizes and awards, including the, most recently the Dubai <coughs> Press Club Award, where she was named as a media personality of the year, and as well as other international prizes. And she has also uh, taught journalism uh, at the Zayt University. Uh, who would like to go first? Okay. No, go first go because ahead. I just want to clarify, I asked yesterday, 
from the side of the extension, you know, it's going to be Q1A. So, no, why don't you fine, yeah. say a few words about your experiences and then we'll open it for, for, for question and answer. So, yeah, yeah, I've been uh, covering uh, uh, the conflict uh, uh, between Israel and Palestine for it's over 10 years now. And uh, basically, I'm based in, uh, in West Bank and I cover Israel and West Bank. <coughs> uh, this is my first experience here in Washington. I've been here only for two months and I'm staying for one more month. So, uh, most of all, I'm uh, usually based in, uh, in Palestine uh, and Israel. Uh, through these years, I, I would say that the challenges uh, that we're facing as journalists is, uh, is, good, is getting it's, it's getting higher, and it's not the things are not getting easier. Um, uh, for one thing, we're not uh, facing uh, like one authority in Palestine. We have to deal with now uh, three authorities. One of them is, of course, the Israelis, and uh, of course. Uh, it's, it's very hard because usually in Israel they have their own story and it's not easy to come up with, uh, with different stories. Uh, for a long time there was no Palestinian or Arab media covering the conflict and it was only their uh, point of view. And now with uh, uh, coming up with all these uh, media channels, whether they were Palestinians or Arabs, they, they brought us uh, uh, so much challenges that we are facing. And then in the Palestinian side, uh, too bad to say, but now we are facing also two authorities. The one in the West Bank, which is the Palestinian authority. And in Gaza, our colleagues are facing another authority, which is Hamas, uh, after, uh, I think it was 2007 that they took over. And so it's another uh, challenge for them. And uh, also it's too bad to say that uh, things are getting, uh, worse now because at a certain point of time we thought as Palestinians that uh, we were lucky to have uh, more freedom of expression in Palestine but now with this division between the Palestinians among them it's becoming harder because uh, no one is tolerating the other point of view so it's, uh, it's posing more challenges for us so this is just something I would like to start with and then I agree with uh, Shireen, you know, we have uh, like every, like I've been working as a journalist since uh, I would say 1995 uh, and uh, so I was a witness uh, as a producer during Oslo time but then 2001 till uh, 2009 uh, I was based in Gaza covering for uh, the New York Times, and at the same time, uh, from you know, for four years, I did TV reporting for Al Hayat Al BC, and I would say, um, as a journalist, uh, Gaza has been a school, a real school for me, to implement whatever I studied in American universities. But at the same time, you talk about the challenges, and yes, and. Uh, and uh, I don't want to talk too much, but uh, one of the most serious like, challenges I've been confronting with is Israel. Uh, and uh, it's, um, and really, like, you know, when it comes to Hamas, I would say, you know, during the war I experienced one challenge when I did this uh, story on, uh, on the killing of the collaborators, and I was a witness at the same time, so one of the Qassam uh, guys came to me, you know, one of the members of the military wing of Hamas, and asked me not to cover it, and I. But I said no. You know, you cannot talk to me like this. But you, you have to understand as a journalist. One of the main challenges: how to maintain the focus, how to make everyone around you, including Fatah, Hamas, or whoever, you know, um, calm about your work. And and that requires so much focus, and uh, at the same time, so much understanding to their narrative or their point of view when it comes to certain things. So there are uh, many distractions, I would say, but uh, as a journalist, the challenge is to keep going and not to let anyone stop you. Uh, so, I mean, like, it's uh, now I'm out of Gaza and I'm one of the lucky ones that I made it out. And uh, for me, it's important to keep the exposure. I cannot just lock myself inside Gaza and keep covering one color of the story that is Hamas because the story is not only about uh, that element, you have to be exposed. Now I'm in DC and I'm experiencing the other element that is the American administration 
role when it comes to that uh, conflict. And uh, at the same time, you hear, uh, you know, different point of views, you know, and, and it's very interesting. Uh, but it's at the same time, it's very frustrating because you see the place that is Gaza getting worse and worse. And uh, as a journalist, as an observer, and as a Palestinian, you, you know, throughout history, I've been, you know, witnessing the change within the place. And, and it's, uh, it's very, it's a very sad story and it's very depressing and it gets into you as a journalist. So it's very important to get out and to be, ex to be exposed, to get the energy at one day or I don't know when, you know, just to go back and continue the work. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I guess that we can start with the question and answer, and I'm going to ask uh, the first question, actually. The first one is, and you've touched on the read, is what are some of the challenges and uh, perhaps the advantages of being a Palestinian journalist for both of you, this question, uh, of being Palestinians, but who are covering this very complex issue. What have been the problems? What have been the advantages? Um, the advantages, I have to, <laughs> to think about that. <laughs> well, uh, for sure there are advantages. When you are Palestinian, it's easier to know, you said it, the complexity of the uh, Palestinian society, how things uh, go on. So, uh, in some cases, yani, especially us, in uh, uh, I, I'm working with a channel that has been on debate, and uh, uh, we had uh, many people who didn't agree. We, we faced many problems with all the authorities I've been talking to uh, uh, about, and uh, so sometimes it's. Uh, uh, when you when you know them as Palestinians, sometimes it helps. Uh, as a, a Palestinian journalist, you know how to, uh, to to get things going because you know at a certain uh, point sometimes it could be really dangerous. Uh, you could be subject to incitement. Uh, 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 our office was closed one time in uh, in Ramallah, and we had really problems with the Israelis. Well. I don't think it's, it, it's never a, an advantage when we're talking about the Israeli side. It's, it's always a disadvantage, especially uh, when uh, uh, the Second Intifada started, all my colleagues from the West Bank, they all lost their uh, uh, press cards, and they, did had, uh, and they had no access to move around. So uh, what that happened is that uh, they were paralyzed, uh, all our crews, and they couldn't get out of Ramallah, uh, or the city they are uh, in. Um, for us from Jerusalem, it was a little bit easier to move around. But uh, so the Israelis, it's it's another story. But at least with the let me say with the Palestinian Authority or Hamas, sometimes it's uh, it's easier when you're Palestinian because you know you know people you could talk to you uh, you have a sense of this uh, complexity uh, of uh, relationships and uh, uh, it's easier to go through it. So. Probably, I think that's... Uh, well, Shireen, you, you touched on uh, earlier in your brief presentation on a new aspect of the coverage, and that is the role of the Arab media. The <coughs> Arab media right now that is playing a major role in covering stories such as the Arab Strength conflict, as well as other issues, including Iraq, uh, from an Arab perspective, perhaps. Uh, how significant is that, and do you think in any way that it's... Uh, uh, this is contributing to this, the way the media has been covering the issue, and I would like to, to have both of you uh, touch on that, because, uh, uh, and on a broader question also, I'd like to focus on the role of the Arab media, but also on that, and I won't ask any more questions unless, uh, I'm sure you all have questions, I want to monopolize this, but as someone who has followed the media coverage, uh, especially the American media coverage of uh, the Arab-Israeli conflict, uh, and has written extensively about it. One of the problems I found with the coverage of the, of the American media has been that the media uh, often ignores the the thematic, the contextual uh, background. It does not, uh, it goes with the ebb and flow. We hear a lot about cycles of violence. We hear a lot about the uh, start and stop of the, of the peace process. Uh, uh, but we don't really get to the heart of the issue, issues such as the occupation itself and all. Uh, so what do you think of the way uh, the media has covered this? How have you dealt with this issue? And how would you go about trying to maybe uh, improve this, uh, the way this, uh, this issue has been covered? You don't want me to talk about advantages? You do? Of course I do. So <laughs> yes, go, no, we do. But this is the, the second question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. So the advantage is uh, definitely, you know, as a Palestinian, it is an advantage because you understand the issue very well and uh, and uh, you are living it. You are not outside the place and then you are sent from time to time. You know, it's very, um, I think one of really the advantages is that when a reporter is living the story, it adds a lot. Sometimes it has, of course, disadvantages because you, are, you become part of it and uh, it can, uh, Yeah. yeah, it can affect you definitely, but uh, yeah, it's not mine for sure, but it's really disturbing. So one of the advantages is to be a Palestinian, to live the story. You know, I think I recommend, you know, journalists, even if they're foreigners, they have to live, you know, where where they are covering, and not just to be sent from time to time. And, and one of uh, the advantages also, if you are not belonging, because the the sad part when it comes to many uh, Palestinian journalists, they belong to a faction. You know, they have a history, like in the past, you know, they used to belong to that faction or that faction. So they will be always tainted, you know, as, you know, this person belongs to that. So if you, if you, give, uh, let, us, let me give an example. If you are a journalist known to be Fatah in the past, you know, Hamas people will never trust you and vice versa. So, and, uh, and, and that's the story. And, and luckily, I've never belonged to any political faction, and that's why. I feel like a strong on the ground talking and teaching everyone. Uh, yeah, advantages. Disadvantages, you know, as I said, if you belong and uh, and uh, yeah, and I, I I mean like for for journalists, exposure is the key. You know, they have to be exposed. You know, and I think the more they expose to other elements of the story, uh, it, it it makes a difference. The sad part now you have Gaza completely separated from the West Bank. So, you know, and that is, you know, like you imagine, you know, you, you are Gazan journalists and you are just based in Gaza and you cannot see the other story that is the West Bank. And of course the Israelis don't let someone like me who work for the New York Times, you know, even work and they give me a hard time. And, uh, and that's also another challenge, you know, being a Palestinian journalist, even if you work for Reuters or AP or in New York Times, Israel will never give you an access to the West Bank or yeah. Okay, so yeah, we talk about the, we're asking about the, uh, Arab the role media. of the Arab media. Or yeah, I think um, I think it's um, it's very interesting and it's it's very important uh, uh, the role of the Arab uh, uh, media. Uh, I think basically now what we're we're living uh, in Palestine is that. Uh, it's not just a confrontation on the ground between Palestinians and Israelis. It's also how to win the public opinion. And this is a great battle that is going around. It's how can you influence the, uh, uh, the public opinion. And there were some times that I remember in our coverage uh, that um, uh, a few things that would happen and uh, it would really influence uh, the people. And I think to some extent it had to influence the way um, uh, decision makers took their decisions afterwards. Probably um, uh, there are few ones that I would remember. One time uh, when we were talking about the siege of Gaza, I remember one time probably Talit remember, remembers more the date when um, people in Gaza were really under so much, uh, uh, they were feeling so much frustrated and they, so many people went to the borders uh, in demonstrations and that was when uh, the Egyptian government decided to open the borders. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's so much that the media is doing there. Uh, the way you cover these stories, you, the way you make it, uh, influence the, the, the public opinion and from there things could change. I think also the flotilla, what happened uh, about this attack, uh, it had a great, uh, it did a, some job uh, when the world had to, to pressure Israel to ease its siege. 
although it was not up to the expectations of Palestinians, but still it did something. So uh, what I say again is that the Arab media now, it's, it, it is spreading. Um, at least, for example, Al Jazeera, now you can see it in English. Uh, so everybody, whether it was in the Arab world or outside, uh, can see Al Jazeera. Uh, for the first time now, we, you can hear um, the Arab news coming from an Arab uh, uh, channel and not having to rely only on what Israel has to say or the Western media has to say, especially if, if we want to say the, the second question is the uh, American media. I've been here for like uh, two more than um, two months. Uh, and uh, during those two months, I only saw the, uh, the conflict twice uh, covered in the American media. And that was when it was the flotilla. And the second time was when Israel um, uh, decided to ease the, the siege on Gaza. You never see a human story coming out from Gaza. How do people live in, in, in Gaza? Although. In the American media, everything is humanized. Every story that comes up uh, in the uh, in, in the media, and now we s we see the oil spill, how it, this disaster that is affecting people. Every day there are human stories coming out of people how they are affected, but uh, you never see any human story coming from Gaza. Uh, how do people living under siege? When when it was covered in the American media, I could hear the same question being asked to, to uh, um, international officials, is how will you make sure that uh, weapons and arms are not getting into Gaza? But no one is asking how the, who do, how do the people uh, live there? How do they get the medicine? And nobody asks uh, why they have to die because they don't have enough access to hospitals or medicine or food, uh, they cannot build their houses. So this is really uh, missing in the American media. And one other point I would like to add is sometimes <coughs> the ambiguity of some points. When you listen to, to the way the news are edited, and I will also give you another example, when there was another ship coming <coughs> up from Ireland, coming to, uh, to Gaza, and that was after the flotilla, it was said in the news that another ship, which is called Rachel Khoury, uh, is coming to Gaza. And Rachel Khoury is a well-known uh, American who was killed by Israelis. But the news said that this ship, which is called uh, Rachel Khoury, uh, which is named after an American killed in Gaza. So nobody knows who, who killed Rachel Khoury. Whenever you think about it, probably the first expression uh, the impression would be that she was killed by Palestinians in Gaza. Yeah. But that was not true. So whenever there's something that would uh, be against Israel, it, it just drops from the news. And you only see what is in favor of Israel. So, so it's still very, uh, it's very far from being objective whenever it's coming to, uh, to cover the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Yeah, I think the... I agree with Shireen when she said when she talked about the role of the Arab media. It's um, it has played a great role in the entire region. You know, all of a sudden, you know, you have all uh, categories of people with you know all uh, classes of the you know population all over the Arab world having access to the stories. And uh, you have Al Jazeera, you have Al Arabiya, you have many others. So there is a competition, but Al Jazeera is playing the role. The sad part is. Um, if we talk about the two major, you know, like uh, channels, that is Al Jazeera, Al Arabiya, each of them is taking a side. And as uh, an observer, when it comes to, for example, the civil war between Fatah and Hamas, the, the Al Jazeera did a, a, a mistake by taking the side of Hamas. So, to the people on the ground, uh, when it comes to Palestine, they know Al Jazeera is taking that side. When it comes to Al Arabiya is taking also another side, that is Fatah. And that is the mistake. But people are not stupid in the ground. They are realizing. So they are watching both to understand the both narratives. When it comes to, uh, and, and that's, uh, you know, I think, you know, so Palestinians are aware of that, you know. So if they want to understand the story, if they are among the silent majority, they will watch both channels. You know, the Hamas guys will watch Al, Al Jazeera. The Fatah guys will watch Al Arabiya. They feel like it's psychological. 
So when it comes to the region, that's the thing, you know? What are they watching? And who do they believe? So it depends. So definitely, it's, uh, you know, these channels are influencing the uh, public opinion in the entire region. Uh, but really, like, uh, I think uh, uh, we are very lucky to have all these channels that, uh, that didn't exist a long time ago. Uh, um, so when it comes also to the issue, like uh, Shireen gave the example of uh, the flotilla and, uh, and uh, the breaking of the um, border with Egypt, the sad part, and I think this is what the West, uh, Western media has failed, they, has, they have promoted Gaza as a humanitarian case, period. So they are really avoiding the real issue, that is Gaza is a political issue. It's not a humanitarian. Of course, you know, there is a humanitarian issue, of course there is no economy, people are suffering, all of that, but all goes under the political issue. And if we avoid clarifying the story as a political issue, I think, you know, you have uh, the American administration now happy. Now, you know, we open a little bit, you know, so it's fine, you know, we are, and then the Israelis now, okay, no more excuses, no more humanitarian issues now in Gaza. We're gonna get them the mayonnaise and the ketchup and, you know, that's it. But what about the economy? What about uh, the two entities that uh, all the parties are contributing now uh, in coming out with? You have the West Bank that is going to be completely different from Gaza. And that is the fear, if you think in the long term. It's purely political. If you want to later maybe touch on the question of the American media's coverage, but probably Yeah, I mean, like, when it comes, yeah, if I want to talk about the American media, I mean, I'm sorry that I left Gaza, but, you know, my bureau chief's son joined the Israeli army, and I felt like, you know, ah. it's not... <laughs> It's not uh, wise of me. I don't want to risk losing my sources that I've been, you know, uh, establishing for like many, many years. So and it's a very sensitive issue, as you all know. Not only that, but it's uh, it's also it's risky, and uh, you have many small groups that uh, would like maybe to revenge. And you know, I can be a great, you know, person to get hold of. And I mean, like, it's uh, it's very sensitive, and I'm, I was really disappointed, you know, that uh, they took this decision, you know, I mean, like, uh, but, you know, they understand why uh, I left. But, of course, I uh, I missed the place, but I feel good that I left it at this time. Uh, but, yeah, but hopefully it will be resolved that uh, there will be more features coming at this point from Gaza, and, uh, yeah. But, you know, again, you know, I don't, you know, the thing is, as Shireen said, it's like, you know, it, it's like uh, the, the issue is touched upon as a humanitarian, and I, I am against this, because I think uh, the readers in the West, and I think Europe is different from <coughs> the States, in Europe, in Europe they understand, you know, more when it comes to that, it, that, it, it, that the issue is political. But here they escape the real issue by, uh, talking about it and by covering it as if it is a humanitarian case only. Thank you. Let me open uh, the question to you and uh, please identify yourself. I'll call on you and uh, ask you a question and please try to make what if you have a comment, make it brief the same also for the question. Yes. Uh, I'd like to. Could you, could you wait, wait for the mic? I'd like you to go a little bit more into the American media, um, because it seems to me, despite the, the Gaza Protella, we're still not getting enough information. We never do. I think the New York Times is a little bit better than the Washington Post. Oh, no. No. The Washington Post is pretty bad. Do you, is, is the reporting, do you feel censored over here, the stuff that you write? Uh, is that why it happens? Do you write things that maybe never get in, or do you write things that um, that are so heavily censored that the, the point is gone, or a lot of the essence is gone? Another thing that concerns me is all the, uh, the deserved attention on Gaza, what's going on in the West Bank, is sort of being neglected. The, the expansion of the settlements, the increasing settler, settler violence, the continuing Judaization of Jerusalem, None of this is getting any attention here. And what do you see as uh, 
a way to go to try to improve the situation. Thank you. I mean, if I want to talk about uh, how, for example, I covered the war, you know, I really sense, you know, what's happening in Gaza, and it was really taken by the New York Times, and, and they did, you know, it's there. The, the issue is, like, even if you write a, a feature, if, if you write anything, you need the, is, the Israeli narrative in the story. You need to balance. And that's why, you know, you need the space. And, and it's, uh, that's the story here. You have to be politically correct. You have to have the Israeli narrative, even if you are working in a feature. So uh, that, that's how it goes. And you know, I think uh, you, know, you need to understand how the Israelis also are you know, looking at things. When it comes to w what's disturbing here is watching your TV. I mean, like, I cannot watch CNN domestic. I feel like, I'm, like they treat you like a stupid person, you know, like a stupid audience. That's it. I really stopped watching it because it's so, it's so different from the CNN International. So, I mean, like, I'm here and I'm reading the.